So, Sina, congratulations on having been named to present the 2020 David Turnbull Lectureship. Your work focuses on developing sustainable electrochemical energy technologies. Tell us about your work, perhaps with an emphasis on the sustainable portion of your research. Well, first of all, let me just say how delighted and honored I am to have received this award. Um, in terms of where my research stands, it's really about um, trying to, to find ways to convert uh, energy forms into something that we can use. So converting uh, chemical energy like hydrogen into electricity or being able to store electricity, for example, in the form of hydrogen. So that's what I view as the sustainable portion is thinking about the long term. If this technology works, how will it um, ultimately prevent um, CO2 emissions? Your award talk is titled Super Protonic Solid Acids for Sustainable Energy Technologies. Give us a little preview of your talk. Yes, so these are super protonic uh, solid acids. Uh, and uh, my first student, um, when he joined my group, it was back in the heyday of superconductivity. So it was just to sort of um, a teaser that we're still super, even though we're not uh, uh, superconductors. Um, so super protonic materials are ones which conduct electricity by the form of proton motion uh, at a very high rate. So the conductivity is very high. And when protons are the mobile species, that allows you to create electrochemical devices where the, you're doing some sort of transformation between hydrogen and electricity or some other transformation that requires protons in it. So for example, one of the things that we've managed to achieve recently was to um, be able to use this device to take ammonia, pull the protons off of it, and then create hydrogen uh, on the other side of the device. And what that means is that you can now use ammonia as a hydrogen carrier. So ammonia, if you decompose it, it's just nitrogen and hydrogen, very clean products. But now you've got that hydrogen that you can use, for example, in a fuel cell. So it, if you can have a liquid carrier for hydrogen, that gets around a lot of the challenges that we have for a um, hydrogen delivery infrastructure. And where do you see this work headed in the future? What are some of the breakthroughs still out there yet to be discovered? Well, there, there are two, two aspects of this. Now, one would be that we would be delight if, uh, delighted if a uh, commercial uh, entity would, would take this forward. I mean, we do research in the laboratory. We're not um, building devices and we're not manufacturing and selling. So that's um, using what we've done already to have a company uh, take that away. That would be great. The other uh, possibility for us is now to start using these devices to do splitting of water. So splitting of ammonia is the easier step of these, but splitting of water where you could take the hydrogen off of the H2O molecule, pull that through our electrochemical devices, protons, and then generate hydrogen. That will take more electricity. That will take uh, catalyst development, but we have some ideas in terms of how we might do that. And finally today, how has the pandemic affected your research? Well, you know, um, it, it, it's, it's certainly been a challenge. I think it's been a real challenge for my students in particular to, um, you know, the uncertainty is high for everyone. Um, and I, really, I have not spoken with any of my students directly, I think, um, you know, in, in person uh, since mid-March. Uh, so everything's been online and we all know that, that that's challenging. Um, and for them to come into the laboratory where they actually need to do their experiments, I think there's still a feeling of risk because you just don't know, uh, you know, when you leave the safety of your home, has anyone else been careful? Um, so so that, that certainly made it hard. Um, the lack of direct one-on-one uh, um, -on -one communication in person. So sort of learning how to do an experiment, you're talking to someone else, you know, through, through video to just, you know, learn how to do it. I think these, these things are very hard. So it's hard on the students. It's probably been less hard on me because I've been out of the lab for quite some time. So I'm writing papers and communicating with them. Uh, but it is hard for me to get a, a good sense of how things are going because I would go into the lab occasionally and just look and see and see who's there and say, hey, how's it going? And all of that is now uh, gone. So Zina, thank you so much for your time today. Okay, thank you.